What's going on everybody? Uh, today's video is uh, going to be film based, which uh, I've actually been shooting a ton of film lately. I'm kind of picky about my film shots, so I don't post a ton of them online, but I'm getting a little better at just sort of putting them out there. Uh, and I think I'm getting better at having more keepers per roll than my previous uh, percentages. And uh, that comes from not being a film shooter up until a couple of years ago. I I'm 41, so I should have some experience with film, but when I was a kid, uh, obviously we have film cameras, but I would just use whatever point and shoot that my parents had. And then I really only seriously got into photography about four years ago, maybe five years ago now, with uh, an interchangeable lens camera. And I decided to try film out a couple of years ago uh, because I had come into uh, possession of some film cameras that used to be my grandpa's and my mom's and anyways the story just goes from there but today's video is going to be about shooting film at an air show and you're gonna think oh he's shot high-speed film with some fast lens at an air show and you would be wrong uh, I went to a regional air show and I shot ectochrome 100 ISO slide film in a Minolta Maxim 7000, which is great because it's autofocus, matrix metering, all that stuff. But I shot it with this very consumer grade uh, zoom lens, which is uh, 75 to 300 f 4.5 to 5.6. So this zoom lens on my Maxim 7000 it gave me the reach that I wanted, but definitely was not uh, a fast lens to use in any way. I think it actually ended up working out better than I thought it was going to. I do have a full kit for my uh, Maxim 7000. I've got the, the kit lens that comes on it. I think this is a yeah 28 to 85, which is actually a really good kit lens, which also does macro. I've got uh, 28 2.8. I've got a 51.4 and I've got the 70 to 210, uh, which uh, I think I talked about a couple of these lenses in my Sony A390 video a couple of videos ago, but um, I it, kind of on purpose just used that slow lens just to just to see. Like I I don't know I I'm I think I've lost my mind, but uh, it actually ended up working out okay. Um, I'll be showing you guys some of the pictures as we go by here. Uh, I did find that the autofocus was pretty accurate, surprisingly, and fairly snappy. Uh, and the shutter speeds were able to keep up because it was a very bright day. The only real issues I had were a couple of backlit situations where the slide film kind of struggled to give me any shadow detail. Uh, I would rather have had the shadow detail and blown out the background of the photo, but it chose to, or the camera chose to meter um, the majority of the scene as opposed to the part down the center that I wanted exposed properly. That's kind of on me. I can override that with that camera and I knew better while I was shooting it too, but it's only a couple of shots and I actually really like one of them, the way it turned out sort of dark in more areas than I had planned, but it gives a kind of a nice look. Uh, there's one that's got a person in it that didn't work out at all, so there you go. But um, I basically just wanted to show that film is versatile, film is usable for all these things that you think you need these super exotic digital cameras for. Um, that is a, a pretty antiquated camera, even in terms of autofocus SLRs. It was one of the very first, if not the very first, fully automatic SLRs. Next year, I think I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to shoot with proper film, maybe at least 400 ISO, and probably color negative, if not black and white. Uh, it was fun shooting the Ektachrome, but slide film is very, very particular when it comes to the correct exposure. You're either going to just mess your exposure up, or you're going to end up with weird grain because... It just didn't like something. And I also noticed too that in a bunch of the shots where I'm zoomed all the way out to 300 with this thing, there is some pretty significant vignetting in the corners of the image. And I had to double check that this was actually a full frame lens uh, because Minolta did make some digital SLRs 
before Sony bought them with a uh, smaller than full frame sensor, but this is, uh, as far as I could find, a full frame lens. So that vignetting in the corners at the long end is just something you sort of have to look out for with this lens, I guess. Um, did it really affect my shooting? No, because when you're shooting an air show, it's just sort of a plane in the sky or something similar that you're shooting. Composition wise and, and like actual photography, uh, I'm not super happy with most of the shots. I was just more worried that the shots were in focus than anything else. So I think the fact that they were is a win. Um, so I kind of want to hear from you guys about slide film. Like I'm a total amateur when it comes to slide film. Uh, I know that you can get some faster slide film from the Film Photography Project, uh, the FPP podcast. They, they have a 400 ISO color slide film that they sell from their store that's, I believe, Soviet surveillance film. Uh, I have shot a roll of it, but I shot it in a point and shoot. Don't ask me why, the point and shoot did not expose it properly, it was awful. Uh, and the film may be an expired stock as well, I'm not sure. But uh, I will also say too that the yellow cast of Ektachrome was especially noticeable on this roll. When I first shot Ektachrome, when it was re-released, I shot it with this camera, I shot it with the 51.4 and the 70 to 210, but I shot it during golden hour and I just chalked up the yellowish cast of the images to the fact that the light was very golden at the time that I was shooting. Uh, it was uh, just before sunset, right? When you have that lovely golden light that makes for beautiful street photography. But this was in the middle of the day um, in very bright sunlight, no haze, no anything really. And uh, there was still a very strong yellow cast to to the images. I've heard people talk about that with Ektachrome before, but I just chalked it up to golden hour. Uh, but I guess it's a thing. I guess it is a little bit on the yellow side, whereas I think Fuji is a little more on the blue green side if you're shooting their slide film. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, it looks yellow to me. Does it look yellow to you? I think we can all say yes. Um, anyways, thanks for coming by and uh, I'm going to be doing some more film related content on this channel. I think I love shooting film and I've got all this film gear that uh, should be used and loved. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.